Hi guys, today we're going to talk about the Disney Company. Uh, I called my presentation, The Walt Disney Company, a case study of successful adaptation and strategic acquisitions. And we'll talk a little bit about that as we go over it. Of course, uh, so many of you know the basics. Walt Disney's a real powerhouse, a veritable powerhouse of media, resorts, cruise lines, animation studios, theme parks, and creative talent. You know, trades under the stock ticker. DIS, and at the time of uh, this recording, it's trading for about $112 US a share. Now, that price is about a 50% discount off the all time high, an all time five year high, which was $200. Uh, there has been some significant fluctuation in Disney stock. We'll talk a little bit about that. But it's important to recognize that the overarching theme is that Disney's uh, success recipe is a strategy of global diversification starting with Disney's vision of a theme park catering to adults and children, which in itself was extremely innovative. That was Walt Disney's vision. Moving on to various levels of diversification, as it's grown as a media powerhouse, buying multiple companies, uh, which enables it to grow its subscribers base through service uh, streaming services like Disney+. Plus. And ultimately, that creates a cycle of reciprocity where... Uh, blockbusters movies, movies like Frozen or an acquisition of the franchise such as uh, Lucasfilm creating Star Wars movies uh, perpetuates fans to go see the movies, purchase memorabilia, toys, etc. Uh, additional uh, paraphernalia, video, uh, Disney shorts, things like that and ultimately driving them to places like Disney World. So one a blockbuster movie, for example, provides a litany of revenue streams for the company, which is why it's become so powerful and it continues to reach adults and children alike. Now, uh, from a corporate governance, governance standpoint, um, Bob Iger, the CEO, and of course overseen by a board of directors, which has 12 members. There's three major uh, functions, three major segments of Disney Entertainment. Uh, one is Disney Entertainment itself, which is overseeing the full portfolio of media, content businesses, etc. Uh, another component is ESPN, which is, of course, the management and supervision of sports content, sports products, sports experiences. And then, of course, the last uh, major core component of Disney is Disney Experiences. That's the hub that brings Disney stories, characters, the cruise lines, all together to allow people to continue to uh, indulge in the fantasies that they have created. And that has brought tremendous value for the shareholders. Now, I, uh, right now, Disney ranked number 53 on Fortune Magazine's top 500 company list. And to me, this speaks to the dominance of it through major mainstream media, creative IPs, leveraging those IPs, Again, movies like Frozen, movies like everything that's based in the Star Wars franchise, new movies that are coming out, so many based on fairy tales where they don't have to pay licensing fees and they're using things in the public domain to then create huge revenue, huge productivity. Um, very, very impressive stuff. And Disney, of course, all of those uh, fantasy media components driving people to what is over 22,000 hotel rooms at the Walt Disney World Complex alone. <clears throat> it does face competition, of course. Uh, Netflix, a major competitor. Uh, Hulu, uh, Disney owns stock in Hulu. But Amazon, Prime, uh, and streaming through Prime, also a major disruptive force to Disney's goal to achieve global dominance. Um Disney's run into some buzz saws there with uh, some of go uh, the governance in Florida. Ron DeSantis and Disney have had some issues over Disney's tax-free status. There's been uh, some legal wranglings over there. Disney tried to resolve those amicably and start paying tax. Uh, that's still in its infancy. We're going to see how that works out. There's a lot of things about Disney that are really, really important, but one of the things that I really feel speaks to uh top-notch corporate leadership, and a very clear strategic vision for broad and diversified corporate growth is that Disney has continued to acquire companies that bring intense uh, intellectual property to it that is going to create productivity and profitability for decades to come. Some of the recent major acquisitions in the past 20 years 
are major, major companies such as Pixar, acquired in 2006, Marvel Entertainment, acquired in 2009, Lucasfilm, acquired in 2012, 21st Century Fox, acquired in 2019, including its affiliates, a 50% stake taken in Hulu, also in 2019, and interestingly enough, the purchase of Epic Games in 2024. Epic Games being a competitor to the Steam PC gaming platform. And that, to me, indicates that Disney understands the value of uh, video games, video game experiences for, uh, really, children and adults of all ages and it intends to capitalize on that platform. How, when, how is that going to materialize? Right now, that remains to be seen. Epic Games is not the powerhouse that Steam Games is. Those of you that are PC gamers will understand what I'm talking about. But the platform uh, for distribution and streaming is there. And, of course, uh, Epic Games is a big uh, proponent of small indie developers trying to get their games out into the public at massively reduced commissions over the prices that Steam charges. So there may be an uh, interesting workaround there where Disney gets access to small independent IPs that become very, very popular. Very, very powerful things. Now, as we look at the strategic factors, let's look at Disney's current strengths. Uh, a, excellent cash position. Very, very strong. Lots of cash on hand. And to me, that speaks to its ability to uh, perform corporate takeovers or make strategic acquisitions of competitors as they deem necessary. Uh, and then those, of course, will pay at rich dividends and create a self-perpetuating cycle of profitability. Uh, B, proven leadership. Bob Iger. Of course, he's been in and out, and they brought him back in because he's done a stellar job. The board of directors also working closely with him. Uh, his execution at this point seems to be very, very flawless. And I think we can agree that he has demonstrably succeeded, and it's going to be very interesting to see what he has in plan for the future. Lastly, uh, investor confidence. Uh, nine out of the ten top movies at the recent box office have been Disney productions. This is very, very powerful. And this speaks to investors seeing there's value in the Disney stock, in the Disney Corporation, continuing to buy. I think we'll continue to see stock prices rise there. Of course, Disney has weaknesses too. Um, descent in the ranks, I think there has been a lot of um, conflict publicly over some of Disney's stances when it comes to what's called quote-unquote woke ideology. Uh, it seems like Disney's trying to do the right things there, but maybe in trying to do that has alienated a certain core conservative base of Disney fans. Um, how does that play out? It'd be interesting to see. Certainly a topic for discussion. Also, oversaturation is a bit of an issue. Uh, the idea that they were going to bring out a lot of new Star Wars movies when they acquired the Lucasfilm franchise, for example. And they did so effectively. However, it is interesting to note that a lot of the Hardcore Star Wars fans started to uh, complain and have some grumblings about uh, things not being canon, things not sticking to the traditional Lucas formula, uh, and essentially we call that oversaturation, taking and exploiting uh, certain specific intellectual property or properties uh, to a point where fans are getting somewhat burned out on it. And lastly, uh, their desire for global expansion into China and Russia uh, the political instability over there and the changing political climate creates some interesting dynamics for it to continue to achieve its goals. We'll be interested to see how that plays out. Now, there's opportunities for Disney. The world of digital streaming, in my opinion, uh, is ripe for corporate takeovers. You know, Disney's gotten half of Hulu. Uh, maybe taking over the other half of Hulu is uh, something that should be in its wheelhouse. Of course, Disney had made an offer on Netflix in its infancy. Netflix now, huge. Disney taking that over uh, would clearly require FCC and SEC approval to prevent what would essentially be a massive corporate anomaly in the streaming space. But I would imagine that the board of directors has considered that or is considering that. Um, people are hungry for more Disney IPs. More Frozen, Frozen 2, where's Frozen 3, uh, Moana, Moana 2 coming out, things like that, and uh, strategic timing of releasing these movies, very, very impressive things. And of course, as we talked about previously, Epic uh, Games as a catalyst for a digital gaming 
platform and penetration. And that really, really, I think, is going to become a potentially extremely lucrative uh, relationship as Disney goes on and continues to mature. Um, talking about a strategic, strategic alternatives, what strategy would I recommend? Again, I think that with Disney stock being an all-time low, maybe a stock split, a uh, two-for-one stock split could create and revise some significant interest in Disney, doubling value for the shareholders and creating opportunities for new shareholders to get on board. And I think that if you had a corporate split at today's uh, a stock split at today's price of one twelve, that'd be fifty six dollars a share. Very very affordable. Investors would be very interested in getting on board with that. Uh, we talked about the takeover in Netflix, and of course, lastly, continuing to generate IPs, leveraging these uh, public domain properties that Disney has been so good at using. Also. Cooperations and partnerships with major artists back in the 90s, Elton John and Disney had an almost uh, insurmountable series of musical hits and uh, musical theater hits that were extrapolated into these movies. There's so many talented artists today seeking partnerships with them. One that comes to my mind is Taylor Swift. Obviously, a huge opportunity to capitalize on a massive fan base, massive popularity. And continue to grow. So be creative in those types of strategic visions. As you look to growth for the future, acquiring key partnerships, the money is there. And the money is there for the taking from people who are so media hungry, consumers who want more and more and more, who can binge watch now 8, 10 episodes, a full season in a matter of a day or two. And they're looking for more. In summary, Disney is looking very, very positive for the future. Tremendous upward mobility and growth. Very excited to see what it holds, how it's going to materialize, how it's going to play out, but there's no doubt there's great things to come on the horizon.